Hello, everyone. I'm excited to be on live with you all. Whether you're here on Facebook or on YouTube, I'm so excited. Um, we technically have like five more minutes. Um, I'm early. I know. How crazy is that? But um, we've changed Claire's bedtime. So she's technically um, going in for story time at 7 rather than 7.30. So like it's not as much of a crunch time. Um, I'm not saying she's not going to come down and want one more big hug and kiss. Um, but yeah, so I'm on early. Let me just double check um, that everything is working. I always kind of like to sort of have it up on my phone as well, um, just as long as uh, I don't have like the the feedback going back and forth. So hi, Denise. Happy Friday. How is everyone doing this Friday? I um, was talking to some neighbors on the street. You know, we always go for walks a million times a day. Um, and I did the evening walk with Claire and, um, and we were talking to the neighbors and they were talking about school and a field trip. And I was like, on a Saturday? And they're like, it's Friday. And I was just like, no, it's not like totally blown away. It was so weird. Hi, Laura. So yeah, I never know what day of the week it is. Hi, Debbie. Oh, I'm so excited that you guys are all on. Hi, Jan. In Delaware, checking in. Fabulous, fabulous. Love seeing you guys all. Okay, it looks like all is good. So we'll wait a couple more minutes um, just to um, give you guys all a chance to jump on. We can do a little chit chat. If you have any questions, um, ask now as I'm like reading the comments a little bit more now than I am um, while I'm stamping usually. Um, but I'm super excited about this online class, On the Horizon. Um, I will say that the On the Horizon bundle came back in yesterday as well as the... Um, the pebbles. So I'm super excited about those. So um, if you were looking to get the pebbles, then um, you can get those now. So that's super, super fabulous. Um, there is a link in the description box um, that you can shop from there. You can also go to laurastamppad.com, which is on the bottom of your screen, um, and click shop now. And of course, you can always use that hostess code that's on the bottom of your screen as well. So um, yeah, if you're just jumping on, uh, give me a shout out and let me know um, where you're at or um, what your weather is like. I know we always talk about weather on here all the time. Uh, it was pretty gross today. We had um, snow last night into this morning, but it was like kind of just a dusting and like 98% of it has already melted. Um, hi, Deborah. So excited you made it. You've been thinking today is Saturday too? Good. I'm not alone there. Yes. Um, although like every day kind of just feels like another day. Like there's nothing that really defines the days I feel like. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's just always crazy and chaotic. Um, so yeah, when we got that like snowstorm last night, I was like, not around online stamp class. Like this has got to stop. Um, so yeah, I'm ready for spring. I'm hoping this was the last snow that we got and, um, and there is no more snow coming, but we will see because it's the Midwest and it's supposed to be like 61 on Sunday. What are you going to do? I don't know. But anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and get started with a little introduction. I am uh, Laura Burkett, and this is Laura's stamp pad. Um, I'm in my stamp pad tonight. Um, I'm so excited to be on in the evening stamping with all of you guys. This is the uh, March uh, online stamp class. Of course, watching this is always free. Um, but you can, if you would like to stamp along with me, then I do offer card kits so that you can stamp along. The card kits do come with the um, pre-cut uh, card stock and everything. 
um, so that you can stamp right along with me. There's also a PDF tutorial that has measurements, step-by-step um, -step instructions and everything like that. Uh, you can go here to etsy.com slash shop slash Laura's stamp pad um, and download your, um, your PDF tutorial. Um, you could technically do that like right now, right before we get started um, so that you don't have to worry about like taking down a whole bunch of notes um, while we're stamping together. But of course, you can always rewatch this as many times as you want, either here on Facebook or on my YouTube channel. So 37 in Texas, that sounds like awful. Like that sounds really cold for you guys. <laughs> It's not bad here. I mean, it's cold, but it's not bad here. Um, but in Texas, that sounds really, really cold. Um, so yeah, I, um, I'm just hoping spring is on its way and stays here. So let's go ahead and get started. There are five cards that we're doing tonight. Um, again, here's the five cards. If you want the PDF tutorial, you can go do that for instant download right now. Um, Etsy.com slash shop slash Laura's stamp pad. So there's two S's and two P's in Laura's stamp pad. Okay, tossing that aside, uh, we are using the On the Horizon stamp set, uh, which is this one here. If at any time you would like to use a greeting from another stamp set, you are most certainly welcome to do that. Um, I did stick with this stamp set um, and didn't... Uh, didn't really do any other ones, uh, but you could like, you know, if you wanted more like birthday or um, something different, you could always switch up the greeting um, anytime. So there's that. Oh, negatives. Yeah, definitely not that. I'm assuming you're up north, aren't you, Debbie? Um, there's also the dies, the Horizon dies. Um, these are technically Connecticut. Hi, Carol. I bet it's pretty chilly up there. Hi, Colleen. Welcome, ladies. Oh, geez, it's dark. Okay, so these are the Horizon dies, except for the dies that we're actually using. Um, so there's the mountains, the um, the little houses, and then these two are kind of used for different hills and things like that. Colorado. Okay. So I can see, um, see it still being cold. Do you have a whole bunch of snow or is it just really cold? Um, either way that negatives is I'm out. <laughs> so, uh, we're using the fences and, um, the grass and stuff like that. So you'll see those as, um, we get started, uh, with the dyes. Okay. And then like, um, the only stamps that I technically didn't use, I didn't use uh, this, like the wood grain one. And then I almost used the breathe, but I decided on a different greeting. And then um, the thanks for everything, you could kind of interchange with the thinking of you that I used. But again, you can use whatever greeting stamp set that you would like. Ooh, snow is coming your way. That's probably the storm that hit us like last night into this morning, Carol. Um, so yeah, that's probably headed out your way. So definitely stay safe and stay warm. Lots of snow, Deborah. Oh, we'll bundle up. The um, designer series paper pack that uh, we're using for these cards is, of course, the Hori um, On the Horizon designer series paper pack. It can look kind of weird because it's very watercolory, um, but once you start to stamp some images over it, it really comes to life and looks fabulous. So I hope to inspire you to use these um, papers and not feel so um, confused with like, what in the world does this even look like um, with some of these papers and stuff. So we're going to go over um, that with the cards that we're making tonight with this set of five. Do you want one last big hug and kiss? Do you want to say hello to everyone? Hi. Wave, yeah. Mm. Say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Okay. Good night, night, baby. I love you. I love you. Love it. Okay. So this is the card kit, all the goodies. I kind of like mishmashed them around a little bit. So, um, they're after I pulled them out, then they're kind of messy. Um, but yeah, does anybody have, um, a preference on which one we start with? 
I feel like I'm going to start with at least like one in this set. I feel like these three in this set are a little easier than the two that are not in the set. <laughs> so if you're looking at the ones that are not in the set, you're probably like, oh my goodness. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with this one. And that is this card here. So for this card, I found this one to be like one of those um, like photo um, like framed pieces that you find at like um, Ducks Unlimited or something like that. Like that's what I feel like this is. Oh, Colleen, how sweet. <laughs> I love that you guys all get so excited um, to see Claire and everything on on here. Even whenever she just gets in this chair, she if my laptop is open, she's like, hi, friends. And I'm like, I'm not doing a video, honey. <laughs> Um, so yeah, she loves to say hi to you guys, but so this is our first card and I'm actually glad that I chose this card first because we're actually going to use a piece from this card in one of the other cards. So I'm going to set that one up top and go ahead and pull out all of our pieces. So we have our Misty Moonlight card base and I'm just going to go ahead and fold this in half. Use my bone folder to get that nice, strong crease there. And then there are two pieces of Whisper White. One is for the inside and one is for the front. And actually in my PDF tutorial, I mentioned that I used the, um, the gingham embossing folder, which is certainly... Um, a fabulous embossing folder and can be used for this. But I realized that the one that I actually used in my sample is the Tasteful Textures one. So that is this one. So really you can use any embossing folder. It's just a very subtle little foo-foo. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. It's really hard to also show it on camera without getting a glare, but also getting a little bit of texture. But really, you could use any embossing folder that you like. So I did go ahead and I embossed that um, because that doesn't fit in my mini cut and emboss, which is on my table. So I would have had to like haul it over and plop it down and everything. So I did actually already emboss that. Um, so I'm going to toss that piece aside and we're going to go ahead and add this to the card front. Also, don't forget that the mini is on sale for 20% off. And I'm telling you guys, you all need it in your craft room. You do. Like, I had no clue why I needed it because I had the big one. And I'm like, if the big one can do everything, what do I need the little one for? Right? So um, a friend of mine said that she just couldn't wait for it to come out. And um, shout out to you, Debbie. Um, and I said, why? Why are you so excited about it? And she said, because it's little and it's handy and I can just crank little stuff through so much easier. And my mind just went, Phew. And I was like, you're right. And that sounds amazing. And that's exactly what I do with it. Um, I... Um, I have it just sitting on my craft desk right here rather than my die cutting station over there. And um, and I use it for almost all of my dies. It's so quick, it's so simple. I just absolutely love, love, love it. Okay, so even if you have the big one, you need the little one too. And now that it's 20% off, even better. So I am adding dimensionals to the back of my um, soft succulent. I almost called it soft suede. And this is just going to go in the center. And then now... The mini, like, okay, so Stampin' Up! has um, the regular embossing folders. This would be considered regular. Then there's like a six by six square embossing folder. And the regular and the square do not fit in the mini. But there are like double packs, like where it comes with two like skinnier looking embossing folders. Those do go through the, um, the mini. But the regular size embossing folder does not. And then the big square ones do not. But the packs that are like two smaller prints, those do go through the mini. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna pull in my Misty Moonlight ink and a blending brush. Now, you can use a sponge dauber. Um, you can use a sponge. You can use a blending brush. You can use whatever you would like for this um, part. I actually, um, I need a couple more things. In my little scrap pack here, there is a piece of white that measures the exact same as, or just about, this one's a little off, um, the same as my front. So this is a three and a half by two, which goes on the front. And then there's a piece that's three and a half ish by two. Um, and that one, the scrap one, we actually want to die cut. And I'm gonna die cut it with the like wood grain piece. And we're just gonna die cut it in the middle. You definitely want it in the middle and not so much like towards one corner or anything. So just pop it down in the middle, run it through. And for this card, we are actually going to um, use it as the negative. And we're gonna save the other piece for the other card, the pink and purple card. So save this. This is gonna be used for the pink and purple card. Toss that aside. And we're gonna use the negative of the die cut. This is gonna be our template that we're gonna place over the cardstock here. And then now we're just gonna add a little bit of ink with the blending brush to get that background scenery. So a couple things with the blending brush, you just wanna like lightly go over the ink pad. You don't really wanna like smash into it or anything, just kind of a light little like tap, 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 brush, brush, brush. And then you don't ever want to start on your project. You always wanna start off the project and then come in. And you'll notice that's where I started. And that's why you never want to start on your project because you're going to end up with a splotch. And what we want is a nice soft look. So start here and work our way in. Real soft. Like we're not pushing hard. We're just like lightly swishing over the top. And I totally just started like on my project. What was I thinking? I was talking, that's what I was doing. <laughs> this you can do as light or as dark as you want. I almost would say the lighter, the better. And then you remove it and look at that fabulous look. Super, super amazing. I think it'll be okay. In fact, if I really wanted to, I could flip this over because my trees are gonna be down here but I also don't think it really matters because I'm gonna have birds and everything, but I still, I think I'm gonna put it down there. I just feel like that might be um, the, a better option. So now I'm going to take the birds and um, I realized that in the class that I did of this um, earlier this week, my in-person one, the birds um, can go either way. They can either go like this or they can go like this, like the, the wings are either down or up, like, and so it really doesn't matter, I don't think, um, which way the birds go. And so we're just going to stamp those birds. I think they're upside down from what they are there, but again, it, it's okay. And then I am going to take my scrap piece of um, soft succulent. Hi, Peggy. Nice to see you. Um, and we're going to go ahead and die cut the little trees out of it. And you know what I wanted to do was because I showed you guys this a little bit last time, but not a ton. This is Stampin' Up's adhesive sheets, and they're super handy when um, using die cuts that are small. And so I thought I would show you guys how to do adhesive sheets. So I'm simply just cutting off a piece 
of the adhesive sheets. You can see I have two here and and it's like jagged and everything, which is perfectly fine. And I'm just going to add this to the back of my soft succulent cardstock. And then now I'm going to flip it back over, bring in my little mini, and I'm going to die cut down here at the bottom. Whoa. My finger stuck to it. And you know, while I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and die cut one of these grass greenery pieces, just because we need that for one of the other cards. And you guys know how much I like to maximize my crank throughs. So we need a few like greenery grass pieces. So rather than cranking it through like 500 times, which is a total exaggeration, um, then I'm gonna go ahead and do two right now. And so you can see that it die cut through that adhesive sheet as well as the cardstock. And now we have the perfect little sticker for adhesive on our project. I will be honest, I just recently started using adhesive sheets. Um, I don't know why, I just avoided them. But you know, I also. I love the fine tip glue pen. It's great for what it is um, with the fine tip and everything, but I tend to use too much and then it splotches everywhere and makes a mess and everything else. Um, so that's why like, I kind of have like a love hate with it. And that's where adhesive sheets come in handy. Cause now I have a complete sticker and my whole piece here is sticky and good to go. Look at that. No like random edge that's popping up or anything. It's all perfectly sticky and fabulous. So now we're just going to add that to our card front. I was like, where did my card front go? And I'm now going to take that piece that goes on the inside and for this one, I'm gonna add just a little bit of this blue and I'm gonna sort of pull down into the top of the cardstock because I really want a nice dark edge here to make it look like the sky. So again, I'm gonna start off of my project and pull down. Circular motions I find are kind of the best. And just ever so lightly. I almost feel like I need to blend a little bit like lower so that it doesn't look so like distinct. Like where it kind of ombres into like lighter, lighter and lighter sort of look. So now I'm also gonna add a few birdies here. This time I'll do some right side up, upside down. I don't even know. So we're going to do one set there and then one there. So it kind of looks like they're taking off. And you can see that's how I did it on the original. And then I also have the relax and enjoy your day. But you could stamp breathe up in this corner um, for a fabulous greeting as well. And now this goes on the inside of our card. And last but not least, we have our twine. I always find twine to be the perfect thing to use for masculine cards because I'm a big fan of ribbon. Um, and ribbon usually is a little bit on the girly side, um, but the twine works. So I feel like twine is still kind of masculine. So like I folded mine in half. You can of course cut the ends here if you want um, to make it two pieces, but like I folded it in half so that I have two pieces here. And then I'm just going to do the bunny ears where I have two bunny ear loops 
and then tie a knot with those two loops. Whoop, I almost pulled them through. Let's pull you guys back a little and pull you guys back a little. Kind of just holding that center. I need to make my loops the same. Another option that you can do is you can tie um, two single bows and then just layer them on top of each other. And I use a mini glue dot to pop these on. The easiest way to use a mini glue dot is to stick the mini glue dot down on your project, then peel off the back. And I just did it like right there on the corner. And then I'm just gonna press, press the knot of those, um, of the bow, and then now trim the tails. There we go. Cute little bow on the corner of the card with relax and enjoy your day. And you know what? I am going to take my blending brush. I don't even think I'm going to go to the ink. I'm just going to lightly go over the back lip of the envelope. And while it really looks like nothing, I know that there's like ever so slight ink there. I feel like it needs more. I'm just, I'm so bad where I always feel like it needs more. And then I do too much. There we go. Now I can see it a little bit better. And then I'm going to stamp some birdies. Fabulous. I love it. Let me know how you um, are decorating yours. Do you like to decorate the back lip of your envelopes or do you like to decorate the front, like the front corner? Let me know. Let me know your favorite. So here we have card number one. That's the front, the inside, the fabulous. Um, envelope, all of it together. So now because we've used um, the outside of it, let's go ahead and use the rest of that piece. And we're going to create this card. So I'm actually going to put the blue uh, Misty Moonlight away. And I'm going to pull in the purple card. I think we're actually done with the blending brush, so I'm gonna set that aside. So now we're gonna bring in this purple card and we're gonna use that um, piece that we already die cut out. You usually decorate the front. Yeah, sometimes I just go back and forth on whether I wanna decorate the front or the back lip or both, or is it too much? I just, I just never know. But to me, a decorated envelope does look super fabulous because who has not opened up their mailbox and been like, oh my gosh, this is something good when you see a decorated envelope or even like a hand, like hand addressed envelope. You're like, yeah, I'm so excited. I mean, come on. Like maybe it's just like adult life is just different. <laughs> Okay, so we have two pieces of the Whisper White. Uh, one goes on the inside and one goes on the card front. And we have five pieces um, that are these little one inch strips. And four of them, of course, are for the front. And one is for the inside. So, whoa, I almost put adhesive on the wrong side. When I saw this designer series paper and started making these cards, then I realized how so much of it was so nature-esque and it was all, you know, greens and blues and stuff. And the backside of the designer paper was pinks and purples. And I was like, you know, I just feel like I need to do an outside the box pink and purple card. You could also do 
blues and add some blues in there. But again, um, I, I just felt like there was plenty of blues and greens. And like you could even do, see, you could do the same one in blues and greens um, that you do for the pinks and purples. So you could always mix it up and do that. And I did, whoa, I got adhesive right on my card, but I think I'll probably be covering it up with one of these anyway. Um, so I actually did mine crooked, mostly because I didn't want to have to deal with spacing and making them straight. So like I just kind of added the first one and like worked my way across, not really worrying, whoa, worrying about like spacing or anything, just kind of like up and down, here and there, around, like nothing too exciting or special with um, with the spacing or anything like that. But you could always do yours straight across if you wish. Boy, I am a hot mess with my adhesive tonight. Just all over the place. So now we're just gonna layer this piece onto our polished pink. And then now it's time to add this gorgeous glitter ribbon. Like the pinks and iridescence that come off of this ribbon just go with this card perfectly. So I'm just going to add a small little dab of adhesive to the center. That's where my greeting's going to go. So it really doesn't matter that um like that I'm adding it and you know it's in a funky place or it's too much or something. Just enough to hold the ribbon so that when I flip my card over it kind of stays in place so that I can add adhesive um, and pull the ends around to the back side. And sometimes whenever I have adhesive like this, I like to use um, a stronger adhesive like tear and tape to really hold that ribbon down. You certainly can. Um, or you can also just use, you know, your favorite adhesive. You can always, you know, add just a little bit extra if you want to make sure that it's nice and secure. I love tear and tape for that nice and secure feeling. Um, and the fact that it's so easy to literally tear it with your fingers. Okay. So this is going to go on our card front. And then now we're going to take the greeting, wishing you so much happiness. And why do I feel like I don't see that anywhere? Oh, here it is. It's the one that I set aside thinking this went with another stamp set that I was working with. I'm glad it wasn't like missing or over there or something. So wishing you so much happiness. And that's just going to go in the center of our little greeting panel here that's also known as wood <laughs> no one has to know that though and then this i'm actually going to pop up with dimensionals the dimensional back really wants to stick to that one Can you guys believe it? I actually almost ran out of dimensionals earlier this week. And luckily, I had some on an order that came. But like I was down to like two sheets. How crazy is that? I know. Laura entered the panic zone. Okay. So this is just going to go right here in the middle over that ribbon, securing that ribbon down a little bit more. And then we also have some pearls that we can add to our card. So I use these gorgeous pink and purple pearls. And there's actually like one in every color, um, but you could also use like all one color or um, whatever you would like. And I will say they're on, like I had to cut them out um, for each one. So they're on like little bitty pieces of clear um, plastic. So just kind of hold it with your, like hold the plastic with your thumb or with your nail. And then I'm using the take your pick tool um, to sort of push them off of that plastic. 
So I'm pushing, um, pushing like off, like as if I was like a bulldozer. So the putty tip is like a bulldozer who's pushing the pearl off like sideways. Like you're not like picking it up like this, which you could, like I picked up that little plastic piece. Um, I better pick all of these up and get them in the trash um, before they drive me nuts all night long. Um, I think I have them all. They're all a little staticky too. But yeah, you want to push like a bulldozer across and then it will stick to the putty. And then since you're on the side, then you can set it down and then pull your take your pick tool out. So, okay, wait, how are we going to decorate our envelope for this one? I almost feel like I should have done an extra piece of the designer paper, which I think I have a piece here, an extra one. I don't know. I don't usually like add layers um, to the envelope, but this one I'm going to because why not? Oh, look, here's one of those little plastic pieces. But you could also um, maybe add a greeting or like the relax or something like that um, to your card front or envelope, I mean. So this is card number two. The wishing you so much happiness outside the box pink and purple card. Let me know which one you guys like better. Do you like um, card number one or card number two? Card number one is blue. Card number two is purple. So let me know which one you guys like the best and we'll get started on card number three. Okay. We're going to get started on card number three. It is super quick and simple. Um, you can uh, make like millions of these um, really easily because you like them both. You like card number one. Awesome. You know, I find it so funny how sometimes I do polls with you guys and you all pick the same thing. Like, it just blows my mind. You know, you I always kind of figure, eh, it'll probably be about 50-50. Um, you know, just because people have different tastes and stuff like that. Um, but I always feel like you guys really gravitate towards one. Um, I've been doing um, polls on sweets from the mini catalog. And like, it's like zero to something. Like zero to six or zero to eight. Um, and even when it won the first round, it goes to the next one and it gets completely beat out with zero. And I'm just like, that's crazy. Okay, so it looks like you guys are liking the blue one better. Um, Peggy, thanks for liking them both. So this one, I have a piece of thick, um, basic white cardstock. Whenever I use white or vanilla for a card base, I like to use the thick just because it's a little bit sturdier and thicker, um, hence the name. So we have this. You're not a fan of the pink and purple, and that's perfectly fine. So um, so I use two different sheets of the designer series paper for your cards. So there's a chance you might have this one. And there's a chance you might have this one. And don't worry, I'm going to show you how to use either of them. Um, and that there's lots of different ways to be able to use this. So you'll notice that this square is three by three, which means you can get four cards from one sheet of six by six designer paper. And that's why I'm telling you, you could really make a lot of these cards super quick and simple. So um, if you have this one here, um, oh, let me show you the original, which uses that paper. So I took uh, my Memento Black and I took the trees and stamped them in the corner. I actually didn't use that bottom like line. I wanted the trees to sort of look like they were like low and down far. So I'm just gonna stamp these down towards the bottom. And you could technically stamp them like all the way across, like a whole bunch of trees. And then I'm actually going to have to clean my birdies. I feel like I super nailed it on stamping those trees because like the entire bottom is on there without any uh, tree trunk. 
nailed it. We're going to clean off the relax and enjoy your day because I need to use that again later. Okay. So, um, so for this, we're just then going to stamp some tree or some birds. And again, you can stamp as many as you want. Or you can stick with just one. I think I might stamp one more, which gives me like a bird and a half up there in the corner. So that is how I stamped this one. If you have this one here, I just want to show you a couple options. How in the world do I have an, oh, this is the mini glue dots. I was like, how in the world do I have some of those? So um, with this one, there's a couple different options. I actually think I have it upside down. So you can kind of see that there's like mountains up here and that, I don't know, this is either a lake, it could be a snowy tundra, it could be so many different things. But um, I am going to stamp my trees like right on that like far edge of the lake, we'll say. We'll add in a couple birds. And, and then I'm going to add the, um, the grass image down low so that it really looks like the, um, the image is like up close with the grass and then across the lake or whatever you will is trees and things like that. And see how that piece of paper has been transformed. I almost want to grab another one. Because here is what it first looked like. And then now here is what it looks like. Isn't that just amazing how it comes to life so much more by just adding a few stamped images? Like to me, that truly blows my mind, um, which is probably why I'm not a watercolor person because I can't see the layers of like, okay, I see a sun and some mountains. And so I'm just going to like splatter it all up there when really, you know, you need to start with the sky and then the mountains and then build the sun and then the lake out front. And that like, no, like I would just, I would start with the trees probably and the sun and then maybe the mountains. And yeah, I totally wouldn't see that. But um, you can also see this one, I added some birds up top and I did the trees down low. Now I do kind of wish that I didn't have that bottom and it was just the trees, um, kind of like how I did in this one, um, but that was my own um, boo-boo mistake. So maybe I can make up for it with this one. You know what, let's stamp another set. And add some birds. So there's like two sets of trees. Although without like all of the tree trunks on this one, it almost looks like broccoli and not trees. Um, I can't say that this one's my favorite, um, but I did it for you. And now you can decide which one you like. So let's just lay all of these out. so that you can see them all. And then for our card base, I actually, my tip for this is to place the black piece of cardstock down. Don't adhere it yet, place it there. And then we're gonna stamp the greeting and then we're gonna assemble. And the reason I say to do this is so that you know where to stamp your greeting because your black is there as a guide but I don't have you put it down yet just in case because stamping on the card base can be a little intimidating. So we're gonna make sure we ink up really well. Don't nail it, Laura. Or don't, whoa, don't mess up, I mean. Let's hopefully you nail it. Thinking of you. Okay, nailed it. <laughs> That's what I wanted to do. Um, and then now we're gonna add this to the card front. And believe it or not, I did not use um, dimensionals, but you're more than welcome to if you love dimensionals as much as me. 
but I kind of just went basic, like real quick and simple. And so if you did make a mistake, you could simply turn it sideways, move this over, stamp your greeting over here. You could always lower it and stamp your greeting up high, um, but you could then use the black to cover up that mistake if you did happen to um, to make a mistake with um, with your image. And I'm going to pick this one because I want to do a different one than my original. And then on the inside, I stamped some trees and birds down in the bottom right-hand corner. Some trees and some birds. You can see that one I have like two and a half birds and this one I have three. And that's what we'll stamp um, on our envelope as well. Trees and birds. But I'm gonna stamp it on this corner. And I stamped more than three. So, there we have our card and envelope, or this card. Let me know which one you guys like better. Do you like the, we're gonna say the mountains or the green prairie? So the green one here, the prairie or the mountains? Which one do you guys like better? This one I feel like is a little bit more uplifting. This one is a little bit more like, I don't know, like soft and monotone and comforting maybe. I don't know. This one I feel like is more like thinking of you. And this one's more like thinking of you. <laughs> you guys like the mountains. Well, I'm excited that you guys like the mountains. I totally didn't think you were going to like the mountains as much. And look, I'm totally wrong. And all of you guys are saying the mountains. So it's like, Wow, I <laughs> I am blown away. I was afraid that everybody was going to love this one and be sad if they got um the mountain paper, but I hope you guys all got the mountain paper uh if you uh are commenting that you loving the mountains. Um and if not, then um then you're just going to have to get some on the horizon paper so that you can make a million more of these cards. Okay. So that is card number three. Are you guys ready for the hard cards? They're not hard. It'll be fine. Famous last words. No. Um, I think they're okay. One of them I think is kind of hard. The other one's fine. But that's what I'm here for is to walk you guys through it. So next, we're going to make this fabulous slimline card. Super, super cute. Slimline cards are like super popular now. Let me know if you guys are loving slimline cards. Raise your hand. Are you loving slimline car slim cards? <laughs> it's kind of hard to say. Um, but yeah, uh, let me know if you guys like slimline cards. There's also um, envelopes. If your packet, um, if you got one of the card kit packets, um, some of you may have gotten a white envelope. Some of you may have gotten a soft succulent envelope, um, but they match um, both the white and soft succulent. The pack also comes with gray. I didn't use the gray envelopes for, um, for this card class, um, but it also comes with gray. So the pack of slimline cards is in the... Um, the mini catalog, and it comes with a pack of gray, soft, succulent, and white. You guys like slimline cards? Okay. So there's the envelope for that. I actually didn't decorate my envelope um, and don't plan to because it's all like really cute. And then it's got that inside liner and everything. So um, I won't be decorating that one. So for this one, whoop, stuck my finger in that. One of the main things I want you to know is that your piece of cardstock is eight and a half, right? Yes, eight and a half by seven. And I want you to fold it on the seven side. So you want your seven to go in half, not your eight and a half. Can I say half more times? 
eight and a half, seven and a half, seven in half, fold it. Okay, so now we have our three and a half. There's another half. Three and a half by eight and a half. Three and a half by eight and a half. So that's the like super important thing um, about this one. And then there's a whole mess of white pieces. So the big white piece goes on the inside of your card. The little white piece, well, nope, the medium white piece layers with your designer paper. And then the little white piece is layered with your greeting. So the designer paper, again, this is one of those where it's three inches by six inches. So I literally cut a six by six and half and got two cards out of it. So some of you guys might have this one and some of you guys might have this one. I'm so glad um, that it actually is like, here is the full piece of designer paper. So some of you might have flowers on this side and some of you might have flowers on this side. So this one, I actually used um, Evening Evergreen as my ink. And I need to clean some of my stamps. So I'm getting out my handy dandy chamois. Shandy handy. Um, and we're just cleaning off some stamps so that we can use them in Evening Evergreen, which I think we're using Evening Evergreen for the last two cards, which is perfect. I nailed that. I went from um, Misty Moonlight to Black to Evening Evergreen. Okay, so for this one, again, you can really decorate it as much as you like. You can add birds, you can um, add trees, you can add grass. Um, I kind of moved my birds over a little bit more on this one uh, versus the original card here. Let's move that envelope and I'll kind of put it side by side here so you can see that. And then I'm just going to put a fence down here. I'm not really going to add a lot to it because I find that it's gorgeous looking and that the birds really accent the um, sky. And that the fence sort of takes care of it down low, and I really love those flowers. So I didn't really want to add a ton of extra to it. But feel free to, um, to add some trees. You can also add some greenery if you wish. Like you could always add some greenery up top here or something like that. And then we are going to add this to the card front. And we want to add it like towards the top. And if you really want to like play with your spacing, you can go ahead and add adhesive to the white panel. So I have the little white panel for my greeting and, uh, whoa, upside down. And you can sort of like play with them a little bit because there is a little bit more on the top and the bottom. Uh, than there is on the two sides. Okay. And then for our greeting piece here, again, you can use whatever greeting you would like. I did the relax and enjoy your day. So I'm going to stamp that in full strength, evening evergreen in the upper right, upper right hand corner. Relax and enjoy your day. Then I'm going to take the grass. I'm going to ink it up in the evening evergreen. I'm going to stamp off once, maybe even twice, like a little lighter on the second one. And then I'm going to stamp this in the lower left hand corner. Just for like a little bit of background grass, but nothing like major to like overshadow that relax and enjoy your day. So just enough to kind of add some foo-foo, but not really overshadow the greeting. By stamping off, you can really get so many different shades of ink and have a lot of versatility with one ink pad. Okay, and then on the inside, 
you can decorate as much as you want. I did a little bit of the greenery at the bottom and some birds at the top. Are we getting tired of the birds or are we still loving the birds? Because I feel like the birds are on every single card. And I'm really going to fill in with some birds. It's a whole flock of birds. The one thing with this is I feel like I have a hard time like taking a photo of it because it's so long. I feel like I'm like, see the birds up here and then see the greenery down here. And can you see the whole card at once? Um, but anyway, sorry for that like craziness. And then we're going to add this to the inside. Again, there is a little bit more um, greenery or green card base on the top and the bottom than there is on the sides. Oh, we for almost forgot our fence. Okay. Oh, here's my scrap white. And, and in the dies, there's actually two fences. Um, you can really use them however you wish. Like you can make it look like a gate you know, like the gate is open and it's like, come on in. Um, or you can just do one or you can just do the other. Like you can really kind of play with them like as you wish. Um, if you want to cover up some of your like flowers and make it look like the flowers are behind the gate, you're more than welcome to do so. Um, decorating with these um, is is all personal preference. So I am actually going to bring in um, some of that um, adhesive sheet again. So like if you're just jumping on in the middle of this video, um, then you can see about adhesive sheets. I really cut that small, but that's okay. So there's my adhesive sheet. Now, the one thing that I will say about using the adhesive sheet is that if I die cut this, I can't use the backside because the adhesive sheet will be on there. So whichever way I decide to use um, this die, that's kind of the way I'm going with it. Um, I can't flip it over. I mean, I can always die cut another one. Like, that's not a big deal. It's not like I'm locked in forever. Shout out to the mini again as it crinkles and cracks. Um, I love my little mini. I just love it. How many of you guys have the mini and love it? You love the mini slimline cards? Yeah, I'll be honest. I've only done a few of them. Sometimes I uh, feel like I'm the last one to get on board with stuff, though. So... I'm not surprised that um, I haven't done a ton yet, you know, now that the fad is almost over, or I don't know, maybe it's not over, but <laughs> I feel like I'm the last one to get on board. Okay, so I don't know how well you can see, but like just a hair on this one, this one, and this one don't have um, the adhesive sheet just on the edges. And then this one, this one, and this one. But otherwise, there's adhesive sheet on all of this. Um, so it's going to be nice and secure on my card. Um, what I do want to do, though, is I don't really want... I don't really want that tall of a fence. So, which this would have been really handy um, if I didn't adhere it down yet. Uh, but I did. So I'm just going to kind of slide my scissors in and try to cut straight across. Try being the operative word. And so now it kind of like shortens my fence a little bit and makes it, and you know what, it cut off some of that um, area that didn't have adhesive sheet. So now even more of it has adhesive sheet on it. So I'm going to pick off the adhesive sheet on the back. 
You love your, your mini? See? Look at you guys all loving your mini. I'm telling you, if you don't have a mini, you need it because it's amazing. Like, I'm even contemplating getting a second one. Don't tell Brad. He'd probably be like, what do you need a second one for? No, it's funny. We really don't mess around. Like, he has sort of like a um, a side gig with his um, IT work and stuff. And so, like, when it comes to our businesses and stuff, then, like, that's all, like, separate from our family stuff. So, um, so yeah, we don't really, like... If if it's coming out of the family budget, then we have to ask if it's over fifty dollars um, on whether we're getting it or not. But otherwise, um, with our businesses, we're on our own. <laughs> Yours is still in timeout, <sighs> Debbie. We will talk about that. Okay, so there's the little fence, and I didn't actually cover up my flowers because they're super fabulous. Um, and then this one, I did actually uh, trim it down on this one as well. Um, so that it would be a little bit shorter and uh, straight across, and it doesn't cover up all of those um, all of those flowers. And then there's the inside and our fabulous envelope. <laughs> oh, Debbie, you're hilarious. <laughs> so now, uh, which one are you guys loving the most? The first card? Um, with that scenery, the purple and pink, or we'll say the mountain card, since so many of you guys love the mountain version, uh, or the slimline card. Let me know which one your favorite one is, and I will get the goodies for the last card, the fifth and final card, the hardest one. No, I'm kidding. It'll be okay. Look, we still have four minutes. I really don't think I'll finish this card in four minutes, um, but... I feel like we're doing really good on our timing. This is the final card. This is a Z fold card and it uses the entire scenery of a piece of six inch designer paper. Hi, Susan. No worries about being late. You can always watch the replay and um, I'm so excited to see you on. You guys are loving the slimline in the mountains. Okay, awesome. Well, hopefully this one will wow you. You can always stay on for the last card, Susan. I'm so happy to have you on. Um, so this is a Z fold. And look, six inches of that designer paper all the way across, which means the only part that we don't use on an entire six by six piece of designer paper is three quarters at the top. How amazing is that? So if there's that sheet of designer paper that you just love and just can't pull yourself to cut it into pieces, Cut it into pieces like this and use every single piece and it'll be fabulous. And then we also have that back panel too. I feel like there's a little bit of glue on there, but it's not sticky. So I'm not sure what that is. So let's get started on this final card. So we're going to take our regular card base. This is Evening Evergreen, eight and a half by five and a half. And we're going to fold it in half. Be ready to hear the word half, rapid fire. Okay, fold it in half like a regular card and then fold the front flap back in half. Okay, so now we have our card base. So with the designer series paper, um, we want to trim that down. So if you got one of the kits, your piece is a full six by six, right? So you can trim either a little off the top or a little off the bottom or a little off of both, whichever you prefer, but we need to get it down to five and a quarter. So I'm just going to trim off a little off the top. So three quarters of an inch off the top. And then I'm going to cut it into two inch strips. Two, two and two. Okay, so we're gonna line them all back up as if they weren't cut. Two, two and two. Is that right? Why does that one look weird? It goes over here, that's why. 
two, two, and two. And then we're going to add that um, skinny piece of basic white to the end. Okay. And now we're going to stamp our birds across, which is why we're kind of lining them back up again. So I'm going to kind of start on the second one. So there's our birds going across the scenery. And then you can add trees. You can add um, the greenery here. I'm going to kind of add, let's see, I'm going to add some greenery down low. And then I think I might actually add some trees up high on the edge. I almost feel like I want to add another tree right here, but I don't want like this extended piece. So what I'm going to do is pull in a piece of scrap. And I'm going to take this one and I just want the trees. I don't want that extended piece. Maybe I should just get over it and do it. I'm nervous. Do you think I, sh I can do it? There, that's what I wanted. I just wanted just a few trees. Well, all three trees, but just a little bit of the um, the base. Okay, so there's my scene. And then now I'm going to adhere it to my card front. Oh, wait, I want to do um, a little bit of greenery on this piece and relax and enjoy your day. Okay, so now I'm going to bring in my card base and we're going to pick up the first panel. So the far left panel, I'm going to add adhesive to it. And I'm going to place it on my card front, like level with this crease. So there's going to be three sides of the evening evergreen, and it's going to be flush with the edge of this crease. Actually, I'm going to turn this around so that I'm flush with the edge. Okay. So see how it's flush with the edge. Let me see if I can get a white piece here. Flush with the edge, and then it's got three sides of Evening Evergreen. Then we're going to take the second panel, add adhesive. And this one is going to go on the inside here, flush with this crease here with three sides of Evening Evergreen here. So it's gonna go like in the crack. So see how it's directly in the crease, but it's got three sides of Evening Evergreen right here. Okay, and then we're going to take this final piece of the designer paper, the far left side, and this one we're just going to do three equal sides. So it's not going to go in the crease. It's going to go with three equal sides of Evening Evergreen. And then this last basic white piece is also going to go with three equal sides of Evening Evergreen.
So you can see how there's equal spacing now between each one, but that's because some of them are on the crease. So if you actually had it like even um, on either side and not on the crease, then it would be like weird spacing. But see how it's that full, like, to me, this looks like, like the Lion King or something. Like, I think it's because of that sunset there, but it's just, it's stunning. I love it. And then the back side, um, that's where you're actually going to use um, to write your greeting and your message because we really just, we love the, the front of the card. And so we don't really want to mess that up at all. So I did the back. And I just did a little bit of greenery. You could also add some birds to the top, but I feel like we might be overdoing it with the birds with all these cards. So I am just going to stick with just the greenery. And this goes on the back of the card. So there's the back. And now this one we can decorate with any of those die cuts. So let me bring back in the original one. With this one, I stamped the birds across. I added some of the greenery there. I added some of the greenery grass here. And then I added just a little bit right here. I then added two fences and I added some of that die cut greenery. But like this one here, I trimmed off the ends. Let me just pop out the greenery that we did. Um, like see how it's like long and goes real like tapered. So for this one, I like, I cut it off like right here. And then for this one, I cut it off like just a little bit off the end right here. So I just cut off just a little bit because technically the whole piece of greenery goes on to the next page, which you're more than welcome to um, like cut it and then add it to the other side or just cut it off and just don't use the whole long piece. And then I added a few of those pebble stones. Um, I think I gave everybody six stones in their kit. I used four for this card. Um, you could also, I was trying to be really sparing because I wanted to make sure I had plenty for all of your guys' kits. Um, so you could always use like four here and two over there. You could also use some on this card here. You can really use your um, little pebbles um, as much or as little as you want on any of your projects. So for this one, I do have this greenery. I'm really not sure how I'm going to decorate this one because it's different um, than the sample. But I do think I'm going to add a little bit of greenery down here at the bottom. And I have the um, the adhesive sheet on the back. But I think I'm just going to add just a little bit. And whoop, I already forgot. I'm going to trim it off like at that notch. Maybe I'll use that piece too. So now we're going to peel off the back of our adhesive sheet to reveal our little homemade sticker. And so I kind of just like laid it over the top of the greenery right here. Probably kind of overshadows it and I should have like scooted the greenery over a little bit. Um, but that's okay. And then I'm going to add some pebbles. I don't know that I'm going to do any gates on this one. Um, just because, well, you know what? Maybe I should try. I think I have some die cut gates somewhere. Here's one of them at least, just to kind of show you what maybe it would look like. Like that looks kind of cool um, right there. Would you guys add a gate to, to this one? Or do you think it looks good without? So let's see if I can get both of these in view. Maybe. 
And then let me know which one you guys like better. I almost feel like I like the gate. You think I should do two gates? Like the one going in the one direction and the one going in the other? Okay, so I need to die cut this one. And I don't think I'm actually going to add the adhesive sheet because I might have to use the back side of it. You like it with the gates? Okay, so gates it is. I do have to say I really like the gate. Um, I, um, I feel like the gate is what like sold me on this entire bundle. Where's my little take your pick tool? This one's got the... The take your pick tool is so stinking handy. Okay. So if we do one gate down here, no, how about, like that. It's so weird. I feel like I can't see it whenever I have it like laying down. But whenever I look at my computer screen, I'm like, oh my gosh, that looks amazing. I think I'm going to do it like that. And then I think I'm going to add pebbles along the gate. So let's see. This one does not have um, any of the adhesive sheet on it. So we're just going to add some fine tip glue pen up and down each of these don't add a ton which do you guys like better do you like using adhesive sheets have you ever used adhesive sheets um or do you prefer fine tip glue pen or any other liquid adhesive so now we're just gonna press and hold yes it does look like you're looking like out back like i feel like it's like the opening of the gates are like the yard or something. You guys are loving the gates too? Good. So this one I'm technically using like the back side of the gate or back side of the die. And press and hold while I stick the needle back in my fine tip glue pen. You're going to order the sheets. Yeah. They like, I seriously just started using them. I think with the last online card class. Um, and now I'm like, where are those adhesive sheets? They're so much easy, <laughs> easier than anything else. I think one of my things that I always felt in the beginning with the adhesive sheets is how much you like kind of waste as you die cut it. Um, which I'm getting better at like die cutting a piece that doesn't necessarily fit exactly, but that's like in the middle at least. And, um, and I'm really loving them and they really do make it so much easier and, um, and simple. So yeah, Debbie, I think you should, um, you should try them out. Okay. Where's my take your pick tool. Let's add some pebbles. So I have some gray and brown. These don't want to slide off. I might have to like kind of hold it. Oh my gosh, I love it. Super, super cute. Whoop. And then I feel like I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab an extra. I know, um, I know I only sent you guys six. 
but I do have some leftovers. Look at how amazing that is. I love it. Okay, so now I have to ask, which one do you guys like more? Do you like the original card that I did? This one here with the, we'll just say the purple sky or the pink sky. Which one do you guys like better? Purple or pink sky? I thought I really loved this one, but I actually like this one better. I like the pink sky more. So yeah, let me know which one you guys like better. Do you like the purple sky or the pink sky? Either way, I love the fences. But this one with that like opening up, both of them, pink sky, pink sky. Okay, so we have three for the pink sky and one for both. That is awesome. Well, I'm glad you guys are loving it. Um, oh, and of course we have to decorate our envelope. How about we add some birds? <laughs> I'm gonna add, um, I'm actually gonna add some birds to the back side. I just closed the ink pad, of course, to try not to get ink all over my um my project. So I'm gonna add some birds to the back. And then I think I'm going to add the greenery, um, like the grass, to the front. I love it. Okay, now I'm closing it. So there is our envelope that coordinates with this one. Pink sky. You guys are all loving the pink sky. Well, I'm so glad I did a different one um, than the original card so that I had more options to share with you guys. And, um, and I hope that it gave you inspiration for using whichever one um, of the designer series paper that you got in your kit um, if you purchased one of the card kits. Um, if you're wondering what I'm talking about with the card kits, um, I do offer pre-cut card stock with the um, online card class so that you can stamp right along with me while doing these cards. Uh, this one is sold out. Um, I will say that all of them so far have sold out before the original day. Actually, no, the last, last month's class, I had two or three kits left. Um, and those have since sold. So um, so yeah, you definitely wanna jump on the kits as soon as possible. There is a chance that I have um, some extra pieces that I can always cut you a kit. So if you are interested in one of the card kits, then um, leave me a comment down below or reach out to me and, um, and I can see what I can do to get you one of those um, card kits so that you can stamp these five cards. Um, you can always rewatch the video uh, and, um, and follow along. So, um, so yeah, let me know if you're interested in that. Of course, you can always download the PDF tutorial with, um, all the measurements, all the step-by-step -step instructions and everything else. Uh, and there is a link in the description box, um, both here on, uh, YouTube and Facebook so that you can, um, you can do an instant download of that off of my Etsy shop. So I hope you guys all had a wonderful evening. Um, we finished in less than an hour and a half, so I feel like this was really good. Um, I try to kind of keep it somewhat uh, quick so that we're not on all night long, especially since I know you East Coasters um, are uh, later than we are here in the Midwest. Um, but yeah, this is your favorite bundle from the mini. Okay, so I also wanted to let you guys know that the April, how crazy is that? The April online card class, um, I don't remember the date. I don't remember if I've set that or not, but I'm actually doing the Ladybug bundle. So that one is actually a punch rather than a, um, a die set. Uh, I did have the um, Tropical Layers uh, bundle in store, but um, I really wanted to do that one for you guys. But right now it is still unavailable until later this month. And I really didn't want to pick a die set that was unavailable for all of you guys. So I'm going to do the ladybugs in, um, in April and mix it up with a punch rather than a die set. And, um, and then I'm hoping to do the tropical layers, uh, for May. So stay tuned for that. Oh, I'm so excited. You have that one. Um, you're a night owl. Well, that is awesome, Jan. Um, I'm glad because 
Uh, like I said, it is quite laid out there for you guys. Um, I am not a night owl, especially since Alex has been a um, early riser lately and uh, I'm struggling something fierce. Um, <laughs> there is times that I have gone back to bed and Brad has stayed awake with the kids in the morning because uh, last night he was up at four and um, I think he just wanted some mama snuggles. I don't know. Uh, he's definitely going through um, some major development stuff just with uh, learning to talk and um, he's pulling up on everything now and he's cruising around and stuff. He's not walking for sure yet, uh, but we'll see. Um, so I think it's just there's so much going on in his little brain that he just can't get settled without some mama snuggles. So mama snuggles it was at 4 a.m. Um, and then my uh, amazing husband let me go back to bed after he got up with both kids <laughs> at 6.30. <laughs> so yes, he is super fabulous. Um, so I did get some sleep. It was just a little broken. But I hope you guys all have a wonderful evening. Have a wonderful weekend. Um, yes, a little boy is going to be one this coming week. And that just blows my mind. Um, less than a week away. Uh, and he will be one. So we might be going uh, down memory lane from uh, um, a year ago this coming week as I cry. <laughs> Um, no, I'm super excited and everything. And I'm just glad I'm not giant and pregnant right now. And instead have, um, a sweet little baby who's, um, crawling all over and everything. He is, he's so precious. Love him. But anyway, have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Love hugs and prayers to all of you guys. Thank you so much for joining in on my online card class. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy, stay warm. I know a lot of you guys talked about snow and cold temps. So stay warm and have a wonderful weekend.